things. I want to introduce uh, Professor Richard Stockman. He's a vice dean of the Faculty of Civil Engineering and the chair of the Steel Constructions, the director of the Institute of Steel and Timber Construction at the Banker University of Dresden, Germany. And uh, Professor Stockman sits in uh, many committees, European committees related to steel, timber, and composite structures. And uh, it's not possible for me to cover so many communities. And I don't know why you how can you find time and uh, see so many European communities. Uh. So please uh, welcome you here to give a keynote speech. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for the kind introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, topics of my presentation are the mechanical properties and a new design approach uh, for welded joints and high street steels. And at this topic, I work together with, with my PhD student for Alf Kessner, who is uh, involved in civil research. Um, after a short introduction about high street skills and uh, design needs for what, I go to uh, our ongoing research project P1020, where we develop a, a specimen for welded joints uh, to test the mechanical properties. And with this uh, specimen, we uh, do studies with, uh, for a lot of effects. Uh, for instance, the influence of the filler metal, the influence of the steel grade, the cooling time. And finally, we use these uh, uh, test studies to develop a new uh, final element modeling for welding joints. The possibility to uh, affect the mechanical properties of steel is in the intrinsic quality of the element iron. We have uh, possibilities to increase the strength by alloying the treatment thermomechanical rolling, cold hardening, and combination of these methods. With this, we change the grain fineness and the microstructure, and that change the clamping in the structure. This graph. Uh, shows uh, the relation, uh, uh, shows different types of rolling process. We differentiate between standard rolling, normalizing rolling, and thermomechanical rolling. Uh, and this graph gives a relation temperature to time. And the zigzag lines in the uh, curves showing a rolling path that means under which temperature uh, rolling happens. Um, in the thermomechanical rolling, uh, some mechanical tools. We use microalloying to opening the phase changing uh, window between oscillate and ferric crystal structure, and we reduce the rolling temperature at the end. Um, and uh, after that, we can decide if we do accelerated cooling by water or if we cooling at air. And this graph uh, is schematic in an overview uh, about the relationship between the yield strength and the carbon equivalent for different uh, steel grades. Uh, from the thermomechanical rolling process, we get at the same carbon equivalent much higher yield strength in relation to the quench and the normalized steel grades. And that uh, brings more toughness, makes welding easier, but we have a higher softening effect in the steel grades. Um, a design of wealth by Eurocode uh, 3 uh, is done by part 1.8 and we have additional rules in part 1.12 for high street steels. Um, in the directional method, we uh, determine the formidable stress and compare it uh, with um, a lower stress, which we get from the ultimate strings of the uh, steel grades which we use, and uh, uh, a correlation factor beta W and a safety factor gamma M2. Uh, this the simple formula in, uh, includes this beta W factor, the correlation factor, which depends on the steel grade, and which is mainly assessed by overlap joints because this kind of joints gives the lowest uh, 
uh, result in the resistance of the uh, welded connection. When we we have another we have another uh, um, um, comparison for the normal springs, uh, so a, a second limit in the directional design method, and when we compare these two proposed limits in relation to the yield springs of the steel which we use, then we will see uh, beginning from the steel grade S420, we get values lower than 1.0, and that means uh, the cross-section area of the weld must be higher than the area of the connected section if it is fully utilized. Topic of our ongoing research project, uh, PE 1020, is the development of design and execution rules to make uh, welded joints and high spring steels more economic. At this topic, we work together with uh, the Chair of Welding Technolo Technology at the Technical University of Cambridge, which uh, gives us a good impact of metallurgic things and uh, welding. Uh, topics which are necessary to know, uh, especially for design of uh, welded uh, structures. And aims of this uh, project are the development of the new design approach for welds, uh, to develop a simple test specimen to determine strength and ductility of welds. Uh, we consider speed grades between 500 and 960. Uh, as thermomechanical road and crunch steel grades. And finally, uh, we do an optimization of the welding process to make welding easier for high spring steels. One uh, main idea of the new design approach is to differentiate between the behavior of the weld itself and the uh, uh, efforts which we get from the connections. Um, and second uh, point is, um, or, or, or this, this first point leads to the possibility that we don't have to do a lot of tests uh, by connections, which are very expensive. Uh, we have to develop uh, a, a small tensile test to study the world itself and then we can uh, find a view on the uh, total uh, joint uh, by a correlation factor alpha w, which considers the uh, efforts for the connection itself. So uh, the design of weld in our design approach is to determine from the stress and to compare it with the allowable stress, which consists of the uh, tensile strings of the weld and the welding construction parameter alpha w and of course the safety factor. For this it is necessary to develop a test specimen uh, and from this test specimen we uh, want to have uh, the tensile strings and also the ductility in a kind of matrix assessment and so on. And why don't we do that in the same manner for welds? Um, actually, we do test at, uh, uh, connections, determine the strings of the connections and go down to the resistance of the worlds. And we consider the worst connections uh, to determine the strings of the world, which, uh, which leads to much effort to introduce new steel grades or new welding pr procedures on for new filler metals. And so uh, it is better to go to a certain kind of test uh, to have the mechanical properties of the weld itself. Our approach uh, for the uh, test of the welds is a flat tensile test, which we uh, 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 composed by the ISO standards, um, and it is a uh, flat tensile test which we take from a 20 millimeter thick plate with an x bar weld. Uh, we uh, uh, do a, a tailoring of this flat tensile test and we take a borehole in the middle and that makes sure that we get fracture not in the heat affected zone, we get fracture only in the weld. And uh, we have a measurements 
uh, of a, a, a length L mod, which is mainly in the welded zone, so that we get not much effect from the basement unit. The thickness of the specimen is five millimeters, so in total we get a half square meter, uh, centimeter uh, area, um, and that uh, can be tested in simple uh, testing machines in laboratories which have this kind of test facility. This is our testing machine, um, and here you can see a sample with a, with a crack. And uh, one, one point is, uh, what is about the borehole? We have uh, a kind of notch effect which we have to check. And we have done a test comparison with and without borehole in the base material. You, you see the four kind of base materials. And, uh, the blue dots uh, are the whole specimens and the purple dots are the uh, non-whole specimens when you see a slight increase in also springs, um, which is around 5% in the highest strings and here for the lower strings around 10%, but this is covered in the, in the design work. The next thing is, is the test specimen able to differentiate between the different activities? that we tested also both for the uh, base materials, what you can see here in S960, S700, a very strong S700, uh, and the S690Q uh, and the S500M. And uh, the, the tensile strength, uh, tensile uh, strain which we get was here uh, for the higher grade 6% and for the lower grade approximately 30%. So the kind of test specimen is able to differentiate between the different activities. And this is our uh, welding robot, which we used to prepare this test specimens. Uh, it's a six-axis robot, and we have a rotatable table to do this weld. And we uh, change the preheating temperature and the welding speed to get different cooling times between 500 and 600 degrees to check the influence of the cooling time. And these are uh, test results to check the influence of the speed rate in combination with the filamental G62. And what you can see here, this is the stress strain, uh, there is not much difference in the strings. And that shows that uh, the resist, the tensile strength of the weld is mainly affected by the fiber metal and not from the base material. This is for 12 second cooling time. And here you can see for the different steep grades uh, and the different fiber methods, the test results. In, a, in addition, uh, here are the nominal test uh, nominal tensile strings of the filler metals which you get from the code. And what you can see, um, we have an overstrength for the low grades of filler metal, G35, uh, G42, this is here, G62, this is here, and we reach uh, just uh, for the G79, uh, the strings which is nominal. And that shows if you use lower steep rates, you have mainly an overstrings in the world. If you use higher filaments, uh, you have not so much overstrings. Um, we tested the cooling time uh, between five, uh, 800 and 500 degrees for different steep rates and filaments. We used three layers per side and we uh, tested 5 seconds, 12 and 20 seconds. And in addition, we tested the base material uh, with a so-called dilatometer test. Here you can see the test facility. Uh, where we uh, were varying the cooling time, T85, between 1.5 seconds up to 25, and the peak temperature between 600 and 1,350 uh, degrees. And here, uh, the results for the G79 in combination with S690Q for 5 to 
12 and 20 seconds. And from this, you can see the strong effect of the cooling time and the resistance of the world. Uh, for five seconds, we get 1,000 megapascal. Uh, for 20 seconds, around, let's say, 850. We have a difference in ductility, uh, let's say, around 6-7%. Six, six, uh, for the longer cooling time, we are around 10%. Uh, and that shows short cooling time, high springs, low ductivity, long cooling times, uh, uh, low springs, high ductivity. And the difference between 12 and 20 uh, seconds is not so much. And here, uh, the results are shown in, a, in another diagram, where we have the five seconds, uh, 12 and 20 seconds, the red dots are the yield springs, and the uh, blue dots, uh, the tendril springs, and uh, uh, these lines are the FU from the base material. And from that you can see, uh, if we take the five seconds, uh, we get uh, an overmeshing uh, for the yield and tensile springs. They are very close. If we take 12 or 20 seconds, we get for FU a kind of meshing, uh, undermeshing, and for FY uh, the undermeshing for 12 and 20 seconds. Okay, and we have done tests without bubbles uh, to show what happened in fracture. Here, as a red line, are marking the weld and the heat affected zone. And when we take five seconds, we get fracture out of this weld. If we take 12 and 20 seconds, we are in between in the heat affected zone and the weld itself. That shows uh, that the differences which we checked in the hole. Uh, we uh, can compare with a, a specimen without a problem. And here you can see the results for the G42 uh, in combination with S690Q, uh, where we uh, vary between 5, 12, and 20 seconds. And you see, uh, we get uh, if we take 5 seconds, we are around 750. Uh, if we take 20 seconds, we are, let's say, 570. And the ductility is not affected so much in this, uh, for this filament. Uh, here is a matrix evaluation, and you can see the rela uh, relation between the yield and the tendons, uh, the tendons and the yield springs. Uh, five seconds we have 1.18, 12 seconds 1.25, and 20 seconds 1.3. And uh, you see we have uh, strong differences in the tensor and the yield springs, uh, here about 18%, here about 26%. But this kind of graph we have seen yesterday from uh, Professor Chung. Um, in the, uh, uh, this, this is a curve of the relation between the peak temperature which we reach and the welded connections. We start from the uh, liquid weld metal, then we have the fusion zone, coarse grain zone, fine grain zone, intercritical zone, tempered zone, and the base material. And here you see for the speed grade S690, for 1350 degrees and 20 seconds cooling time, uh, the microstructure for 1800, and here the unaffected base material. This behavior we can study by dilatometer tests. Um, and with this test uh, facility, we can predict the time temperature curve in a test specimen. And after that, we can do tensile tests with this specimen and other things uh, to check uh, what kind of change do we have in the mechanical properties. And here are you on the chemical composition of the different ski grades. Uh, the thermomechanical rolling steels have usually a low carbon co uh, content, uh, especially the, the MC uh, steels for cold forming. And here you see uh, we have a carbon 0.044, which is lower than from the S500 ML 0.078. The silicon content is not terrible, manganese uh, is a little bit lower than here. 
for the French steel grains, we have higher contents. And here are the microstructures of the steel, which are here unaffected, uh, S500 ml, Z100 MC. Here you can see the thermomechanical rolling effect and the quench steel grades where you can see uh, the martensitic microstructure. And here, the results for the steel grade is 690 Q uh, from the dilatometer test. You see the cooling time here and the tensile springs. This is a coarse grain zone, the fine grain zone, uh, the intercritical zone, and we have upper strings here. This is the relation to the base material. Um, and in the intercritical zone, uh, if we have cooling times over 15 seconds, we get a slight softening in the heat affected zone. And these are the results for S960, where you see it's a little bit similar on another level. We have 1400 uh, for 1.5 seconds tensile springs. And uh, completely different, the S700M, where we get softening of the total range of cooling times, because as I pointed out before, this T grade gets its springs not from the alloy content, more from, from the thermal mechanical rolling process, and this disappears from rolling. And here is the S500M, where we had a higher content of carbon, and uh, you see here, over the total range of cooling times, we get no softening. And it's uh, funny to see that the springs here, the tensile springs in the core spring zone, is higher than from the S700M. And this a little bit confusing graph shows uh, the relation between the uh, tensile springs in the heat affected zone uh, to the unaffected steel for the different steel grades. Uh, that means over 1.0 we have over springs and below we have softening. And from this you can see S500M, S690Q and S900Q have uh, more or less over springs and we have only for the quenched steel grades a little bit softening uh, after 15 seconds. And for the S500M, over the total uh, uh, um, uh, scale of uh, cooling times, we have a softening which can reach approximately 25% for the steel grade. We can use the results uh, to uh, show the mechanical properties in relation to the maximum uh, uh, peak temperature and the cooling time by using regression functions, and this is shown here for the S690 uh, for the tensile springs. Um, this regression function we find in the, in the paper uh, is very well fitted, and uh, from this function you can see this is a range of softening, uh, where we have a low peak temperatures, um, and this is a range of uh, hardening of overstrings where we have at high peak temperatures and uh, short cooling times. And this we can do for other effects. And here um, we can use the results from our study for a better modeling of welded joints. Um, this graph shows the spread strain curves for 5 seconds and 20 seconds for the S690Q. Uh, as a coarse grain, fine grain, and intercritical zone. And we can model this uh, wealth with uh, this stress strain behavior and with the knowledge of the wealth itself and uh, the measurement, the statistical evaluation of the thickness of the, the different zones, we can uh, have a better modeling of the final element uh, assessment of connections which we use for our parametric study. And then we have done, for instance, for the, uh, for the flat tensile test, and here you see the world and the cross prime uh, and intercritical zone, and um, we have done in the refining of material model, we use true stress frame curves 
and the Gerson and Schwergart and Nidelmann model for fracture mechanics. And with this, we are able uh, to uh, predict the fracture uh, in our specimen and later on in the connection itself. Now a short summary. Uh, the new design approach for wells is not only limited for ironstone steels, we can use it also, also for mild steels. And um, the main idea is to differentiate between the properties of the weld and the efforts from the connection. And that allows the better utilization and the development of the design approach allows to introduce new steel grades, welding consumables, and welding processes in uh, a much lower amount of effort uh, in testing and assessing. And we can use it uh, also for quality insurance. Um, we have seen uh, the effect of the cooling time is uh, is very strong. Um, this can affect the ductility and the tensile springs, especially for high springs very consumables. But we can use it also uh, if we have uh, medium spring steel grades and under matching wells to make uh, to open the window for the cooling times for welding. And finally, uh, the Dilatometer tests have shown each steel grade has its own uh, behavior. And this is not only limited to the steel grade, and all this is also limited to the producer, because each producer has the possibility to bring more alloy or to do more hot uh, 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 thermomechanical rolling effect to get the strings. They have big windows and they make their own rules uh, for the design of steel and that is very important. Uh, and the behavior is also interesting for fire resistance, uh, uh, post-fire behavior, uh, um, uh, and other types of thermal treatment in the production uh, shop uh, fabrication. Uh, let me use the opportunity uh, to announce uh, uh, conference next year in Cape Town is a structural engineering, mechanical, and computational conference, in, uh, and that's the second to the fourth September. And my colleague Milan Velkovic and myself organizing a, a special session of high school students. Uh, you are invited uh, to participate. Uh, submission of abstract is at the end of this month. So thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.